Beth Richter, and I'm an Instructional Technology Coordinator. Today we're going to be talking about how to use templates to work smarter, not harder. If you check out in the e-learning website, you'll see that there's a link to slides for this presentation. I want you to go ahead and get the link to those slides and um, add them to your drive because then you can refer to them for, you know, anything that you need to do. And there's also some embedded links and videos that I want you to be able to get. Um, I really feel passionate about this particular topic. I feel like as teachers, we work so hard all the time and we don't need to do anything to put more work on ourselves. So I want to focus this on ways that we can reiterate tools that we want to use, um, find a template that works from us from another creator even, and then be able to collaborate among our colleagues. So today we're going to look at um, templates from tools like Jamboard and Google Slides, which you've probably heard of. Um, Jamboard is really big right now, I know. But maybe you've not heard of Canva for education or utilized that tool before. And then we're also going to talk about using um, Seesaw activities and Seesaw activity co uh, collections, both like school and district activities and then like the larger Seesaw community and using those templates uh, to make our lives easier. So we'll take a little deep dive into each one of these tools, and then we'll also um, have some chance to uh, save a bunch of templates and things like that. So you're going to pause the video. So you want to make sure that you have your slides up for this, uh, have the video, so then you'll be able to access all this. Okay, so what is a template and why should we use it? So a template is something that's already created by another maker, maybe an educator, maybe like a instructional tech person like me, um, but it's pre-made for your use. And you can use these templates basically to save time. I know that there's a lot of websites that some of you are familiar with where there's templates and things like teacher pay, teachers pay teachers, but I really don't want to talk about a website like that because I have pretty big concerns uh, that there are people that are creating stuff and putting it out there into the world. And then sometimes on Teachers Pay Teachers, people are taking that free stuff, they're marketing it as if it's theirs, and then they're packaging it up. So there's a lot of, uh, and trying to sell it. So there's a lot of copyright issues on there. Um, I know that people use it as a resource, but there's free stuff out there. And I would rather you just go get stuff that is freely given away by the person who created it. I think that's the better way to go. And I also want you to be able to collaborate with your colleagues and be able to access the stuff within the suite of tools that we use. The key thing when you use any template or pre-made material is that you need to make sure that it lives up to the quality standards that you want as an educator and also like meets the learning target and the learning of objective um, for what you want it to do. And that's the cool thing about templates and all these things I'm going to share with you today. Um, in addition to them being free, you can make copies of them. So then you can edit and modify them and kind of zhuzh them up to fit your standard and also to make sure it's hitting the mark for what you want students to learn. So Almost everything we're going to talk about today, save for Seesaw, um, is going to work within your Google Drive. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up our folders in our Google Drive so that we're ready to receive stuff from this presentation. Once you find a template that you like, you're going to be able to get it and save it. So here's a quick gift that will show you through the steps. You're just going to go to your Drive and you're going to go to New and create a new folder. Call that folder templates because that's what it's going to contain. <laughs> Once you get the folder made because it's alphabetical, you're going to have to scroll down in your drive and grab it. You could put an asterisk in front of it and then it'll pop up to the top. Within this folder, we're going to make other folders. So we're going to make our first folder is going to be Jamboard templates. Remember, folders and folders, it's great. Then next, we're going to create another folder, and this folder is all going to be for different Google Slides templates. And then lastly, we're going to create a folder for our Canva for Education templates. Now, Canva is a little tricky. You create things in Canva, but once you create them, you can bring them into your Google Drive to then assign them out to students from there. So I want you to go ahead and pause this video for a few minutes, and I want you to get your folder set up so you're ready to save templates in a place where you can access them after the presentation. If you need help, remember just look at the GIF that's on this slide, and it'll take you through the steps of setting up folders. 
Okay, first off today, let's talk about Google Jamboard. Google Jamboard is great. Um, heads up, anytime you see an icon on a slide, if you click on it, it will take you to the tool or the website that we're gonna be talking about. Google Jamboard is basically, I don't know, it's kind of like slides and Google Drawing had a baby. Uh, it allows you to set up things, they call them frames um, that are editable, like literally free draw, insert sticky notes, insert images, insert text boxes. It doesn't have the same um, finesse ability like a Google Slides, but it's really easy for kids to use and even little kids, which I like about it. Um, it also has some aspects of Google Drawing to it. So it's kind of like a hybrid of these two tools. If you want to learn more about Jamboard just in general, if you click the slide that's right here on the presentation, it'll take you to a presentation we did last fall about kind of getting started with Jamboard. You can click through it and it'll get you set up on the basics. So like I said before, Jamboard is so hot right now. If you're on any sort of edu social media, you know, Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, people talk about uh, templates in Jamboard all the time. It's something that people have like a lot of ideas for how to use. Um, remember when you're using Jamboard, they do have a new feature where you're going to be able to see version history. But Jamboard can be a little chaotic for kids at first when they're all on it. Um, there's a pretty well-known um, edu tech guy who just posted, uh, Jake Miller Tech, who just posted about putting 25 first graders all on a, a Google Jamboard at the same time and the chaos that ensued. It was pretty funny. So you want to build up capacity for using this tool. I would recommend starting with maybe like a Jamboard template that you push out to each individual student. And again, you can do that through Google Classroom or you can use that force copy trick where you push out a copy to each student. Um, um, but let them edit one Jamboard on their own first, where they can use the draw tool and add sticky notes and add text boxes, but it's low stakes. They're not going to upset any other student. And then the next thing you can do is you can add it to a small group of collaborators. Maybe you have two to five students that are working in a group for a project. Maybe they're table mates or they're in a, a learning group in your classroom. You can have them go in and be collaborative editors on one Jamboard. You can even structure that out. Um, the individual pages in a Jamboard are called frames. So let's say you had a group of four students. You could have Elena and Juan and VJ and then Robert each have their own frame and then have one frame that's a collaborative frame so that they know that they can see their, um, their other students in their group, but they know to be respectful of those uh, frames that they're editing. And then here's the one frame that they can edit together. So you really just have to build up capacity for collaboration with students on that. Some, so some ideas on how you can use Jamboard. So first you can start, like I said, with an individual student copy where you push them out um, a template that they're each going to edit for individual work. Then you can work up to something like small group work where you're having, you know, two to five students collaborate on a single Jamboard, which is really nice. And then lastly, you can go whole group. Um, this is where you can do an activity where they're all going to edit. It's nice for like icebreakers, daily work like this or that or would you rathers. But you can have them collaborating on 20 different frames. Uh, they are limited to 20 different frames and most of us have more than 20 students in our class. So you can pair students up. And once you have a frame set up, you can duplicate that frame, which is really nice. Um, so you can set up your first one and then add like student names to it. You just need to build up that, you know, digital citizenship on how to collaborate well with your colleagues and make sure that they're, you know, okay with that. If there are any admins watching this, um, do know that there's a limit of 50 collaborators on a Google Jamboard. So if you want to use something like Jamboard with a staff, you need to be very aware that it's limited to those 50 people. So here's a short video that I made on how to do a chalk talk. Um, many of you have had like these silent conversations that maybe you've done. Uh, you can't see it hanging on the wall here, but I have one of those giant um, post-it notepads of paper. You know, I would hang them around the classroom with a topic. Uh, students could ask or answer questions using like post-it notes and they would walk around and have that silent conversation or chalkboard talk. Here's an interesting way on how to do this with Jamboard. This is just a two minute long video for you to watch. And the thing that I really like about this is I think it could work well with students that are in person. It could work well with students that are virtual or in that concurrent 
setting when you have uh, students that are in the same classroom but in two different places because everyone essentially has equal footing. You can even share it on something like a meet. You could add some music, add a timer so they can interact with the different frames um, of the Jamboard to do that. And I also have a link for you to make a copy of this template. It's not a fancy one, but if you like the idea, you could add it to your folder. So I want you to pause the video now, and I want you to take about two minutes to just uh, watch this short example video and think about how this could work for you. So I hope that's something that you could use with your students. I think it could be modified for any subject area. Um, I could think of how I would use it as a music teacher to maybe like discuss genre or a piece of music we've listened to, but I think you could really use it for just about anything. So think about how you can do that chalk talk. A place where I like to go get ideas for a Jamboard is in Wakelet. Uh, Wakelet is, well, let's see, it's kind of like Pinterest, I feel like. Um, I'm going to show you uh, my Wakelet account. I have the link on here, but all you do is just go to wakelet.com. When you go to Wakelet, you want to make sure to sign in with your Google account because remember, we're going to save these templates into our Google Drive. So you want these two to be connected. So I'm going to go for the first time here to log in. And once I log in, I'm going to press the continue with Google button. It'll ask you to confirm your account, and then there's two different ways you can use Wakelet. One is you can create your own collections. So you'll see I have some collections. You can follow certain users, so if someone's putting out content you're interested in, you can follow. Or you can also do what's called bookmark collections. And I've bookmarked four different Wakelet collections here for you to check out. Um, there's some really good Jamboard stuff that's out here, which is really neat. So let's check out this one. Um, this is uh, linked on the slide deck, so you have access to it. It has had 61 different Jamboard templates. And remember, these may not all hit the mark for you, but they might give you ideas. So this one is pretty cool. It's from a creator named Amanda Fogelman, and she has stuff that's collected from some different like Twitter things, um, which I really like because I'm a big Twitter user. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to click this uh, mystery spot one. This is one from Alice Keeler, so it's going to link me to a tweet from her and it's going to go to her blog. But once I get in there, I will be able to get this Jamboard template, um, which is really nice. Some of these uh, templates have a whole bunch of, I don't know, different, um, I don't know how to say it. They have uh, different formats for how they share it out. Some of these uh, Wakelet collections are just straight like links to a make a copy. So I'm going to go ahead and say get the jam. You can see she's got the forced copy. So I'm going to make a copy of it. This is going to be mine now to edit. And now not only can I edit it, but I could organize it in a folder and I can share it with one of my colleagues who I think might be interested in this as well. So this one is a, um, a pull a rabbit out of the hat and it uses sticky notes for this one and it's got uh, some cute graphics. If I want to organize it, I can uh, definitely put it in the folder that I want in my um, Google Drive, which is kind of cool. I can share it with a colleague. So there's lots of different ways that I can use this. Let me go back into um, one of my other collections that I have here. This one is nice because it's not going through like people's blog posts and social media. Some of them are just direct links to um, things. And, and she updates this all the time. This one is from a maker named Terry Eichholz. Again, these are not people I know. This is just stuff that I've found <laughs> on um, social media and different things like that, which is pretty cool. So let me look at this Valentine. This is a good way to go. Oh, no, let's do this dance party one. This one is kind of neat. It's a computational thinking um, algorithmic. I could even see um, for PE teachers, you could use it for um, the dance routines. So I want to have a copy for this. I can see I'm view only on this from this maker. So I'm going to go to the more actions. I'm going to make a copy. Um, I'll just call it the dance party because they don't need to know. And now I want to organize it into those folders I've set up. So I'm going to click the My Drive and click the arrow over here to the right. I'm looking, remember, for that templates folder. Let's wait a sec for it to load. I'm going to go all the way down to templates. I guess I could have done something that didn't start with a T. There's my templates. And even within there, I have my folder for Jamboard templates. So I'm going to select that folder, say OK, and now that template is going to be sitting right there for me in my templates folder, which is awesome. And then I'll be able to access it. 
So this one's kind of neat. It helps students create a grid and create a routine, but you can use it for all sorts of different things. Uh, this reminds me of the dance party um, non-electronic from code.org if you remember from the Hour of Code. So if you explore these different collections that I have linked, and I have four different ones linked here, um, there are so many templates that you can get. And I want you to pause the video and click through. If you've never created an account in Wakelet, again, remember, you're just going to press the sign in with Google and get started. And I want you to make it your goal to save five templates that you think could work for you. So take just a few minutes to do that. So one last word of caution about Jamboard. Just like Google Slides, if you have too many objects embedded on a jam, uh, it will be very slow to load for students. So be cautious about that. I know many of us experienced things um, in the uh, fall with Bitmoji classrooms where we had a lot of, you know, bookcases and colorful objects that were all hyperlinks. And then that can have not a great experience for students. So in some of these template cases, use that background image to set up everything that you want. And then you're just putting a, a couple of images or a couple of sticky notes on there so it's not overloading the jam frame. Okay, next up, we're going to talk about a tool that many of you have maybe never heard of before. Maybe you have, it just depends who you are, and that's Canva. Remember, when you see the icon for anything, you can click on it and we'll take you the link. Canva is a graphic design tool that I discovered several years ago. I really like it because, again, like S'more and other tools, it allows you to look really professional and sharp, even if uh, graphic design is not really your forte. It's not mine. Color matching is not my strength. But um, Canva for Education is really awesome. Uh, you just go to canva.com and it will allow you to sign in with Google. One thing that's really neat about Canva, and they started this about a year ago or so, is that they now have all the premium or pro features available through a program called Canva for Education. Do know it takes a couple days to get um, approved for Canva for Education and you have to pro provide some information about what school you teach at and things like that. But basically they'll upgrade your already existing account to a pro account through their Canva for Education program. And you'll have all of the premium like stock media features and everything else. And it is really sharp. So if you want to, I have a video linked here from Canva for Education. This was a back to school webinar that you'll see it's back to school because um, it's based in Australia. This is just from January. Um, talking about some of the features and how to use this. Now there is a whole feature that you can use uh, with your students in classrooms, but I'm not even talking about that when I'm talking about Canva. I'm literally just talking about some of the templates that they offer and how amazing they are for you to be helpful. So here, let me go past this slide so it doesn't play here for you, one minute. Okay, so once we click into Canva, and we're gonna look at it here in just a second, there is uh, an education plan and then they have all of these different templates, lesson plans, worksheets, certificates, storyboards, bookmarks, etc. like really a lot of cool stuff. So I'm gonna take you out of present mode here. This is the link that you're going to go to for Canva for education. And again, remember, you always want to sign in with your Google account when you're signing into programs like this, because many of them will work with your Google Drive. And if you're wanting to push things out as seamlessly and as easily as possible with students, just use that sign in with Google. Um, and remember, it will take a few days probably for you to get approved for this premium program. So since I'm already in Canva for education, here I am on Canva signed in with my Google account. And I just want you to check out the options they have here. So I'm running my cursor up to the top to templates. And you can use this for really pretty graphics. Um, this is definitely a tool I use for like graphics for websites and stuff like that. I, even personally, I'll make like um, cards and things like that with it. But if you look over here under education, holy cow, look at these options that are here. There are amazing worksheet templates and they keep getting updated all the time. The cool thing about this is that they're editable. So this would be something that you would use not as a curriculum, but for curricular support or for maybe a student that needs more practice. 
if you go into here, you'll notice um, that you can search uh, by different subjects and things like that. Um, let me go into here. This is a, a Sky Diary one for sky observation. So if I just click on it, it tells who the creator of it is. It gives this, the dimensions of it. This is just an ordinary eight and a half by 11 worksheet. But I can say, use this template, and then it takes me right into edit mode. So I can customize anything to, uh, you know, better the worksheet to connect it to conversations I've had with students. I can improve it in any way, which is fantastic. And then once I'm ready and I've changed it in any way I want to, I can just click the download button, and it gives you different file formats. I know we have a lot of teachers that are using Seesaw. So in Seesaw, you can place a student template for responses. You can uh, download this worksheet as a JPEG file, as a PDF, and then you can put it for students to annotate on top of using their trackpad on their Chromebook. Um, if you have older students and they're using Kami, you would want to do the PDF export, or you could even bring it into something like a Jamboard as a background if you do uh, an image export, and then they could annotate and move on top of this. The, the possibilities are really endless for these templates in Canva, and I, I want you to really check these out because I think this is something a lot of people don't necessarily use, but there's a ton of stuff in here. And not only is there a ton of stuff, but it's constantly updating and there's constantly new content. So sometimes if you just need an activity to reinforce something that you're already doing, or you want to kind of, you know, zhuzh up an experience that kids are already having, uh, this might be a great place for you to check. You can't collaborate with other people. And I will tell you, this is one of the big confusions about Canva um, that people have. And that is when you create something in Canva, you can only edit it in Canva. But then you can download it and you could put it in your Google Drive. You could put it into Seesaw. You could save it anywhere you want to. So while two people can't collaborate on creating a template, you could create something and then put it in like a shared drive folder and share it with one of your colleagues. So I will tell you, that's probably one of the only challenges that I think people face when they're dealing with Canva is it's a tool that's only used within that tool. Uh, I did make one quick video for you on just how to make something like certificates. Uh, <laughs> I, I joke in the video, I used to spend a lot of money on going and buying this certificate paper and buying like the little stickers. And then I had to, you know, get everything lined up on my, uh, uh, Apple Works product to make sure that I could print my certificates and they were all consistent. Uh, in Canva, you can basically use this template. You can pick a certificate and then just duplicate the page and put every student's name on it so you can print them out or deliver them virtually since we have students at our home. It's amazing and it's like so easy to use. So I want you to take a few minutes now to pause and I want you to check out some of these um, templates and download them. Remember, let's say I'm back to my um, worksheet here. Uh, I've already set up a folder in my Google Drive to receive. So let's say I edited this worksheet. I'm going to go ahead and download it as a PDF. So I'll hit download. It's going to come to my computer. It'll be right there for me. And then remember, I'm going to open up my drive because I've already got folders set up for my Canva for Education templates. Sorry, I didn't have my drive open and ready for you. I'm going to go into my template folder. I'm going to go into Canva creations, and then I'm going to drag this right into there. It'll come right into this folder, and now it'll be there where I can collaborate or share it with a colleague. So even though I have to create it in Canva and edit it in Canva only, I can bring it into my Google Drive and share with someone else. Check out Canva. I want you to take a few minutes and I want you to watch some of these videos, um, even just the, the template for the certificates, which is two minutes long. I think that'll give you a good explanation of how this uh, very powerful tool works. Next, we're going to talk about using templates in Seesaw Activities. 
There are two ways you can consider using templates. So you might think about a template as something for a student to respond to, and you can do that inserting a student template. I'll show you how to do that. But then you can also think about using an activity from the activity library, whether that's somebody at our school or district, or if that's somebody in the larger Seesaw community. You can take their activity, edit it to customize your um, preferences, and then you can use that essentially as a template to push out to your students. So I really want you to think about anytime you're in um, any template resource, whether you're looking in those Google Slides templates, or if you're in Seesaw Activity Library, make sure you're always checking out the activity or the template provided to make sure it works up or lives up to your standards for what you want students to learn, and make sure that it is of the quality you want. And templates, the idea of them is that you can edit them to customize them. So if you need to add anything to improve it, make sure that you do that. Okay, so if you find something that you like, here's just a quick GIF of being in activity library. You can favorite or heart an activity and then you can add it to a collection. This is a great way for you to work smarter, not harder and make sure that you have everything organized. So again, I found this activity, I click the heart, I click the heart a second time and then I can organize it into a collection or right then even make a new collection and, and save that activity there. So that's a great way for you to do that. Let's just pop over here real quick into my Seesaw Classroom so I can show you what I mean about templates. So the first thing is if I want to use an activity from the activity library, I would just go to add. I would assign an activity and it's gonna say, hey, where do you wanna get this from? So check out right here, there's a ton of um, community activities. These are activities that people from Seesaw at large have contributed to the overall Seesaw community. You can search by grade and subject. And again, there's a lot of amazing content. Then I can even check here in my school and district library. So I can check and see other teachers. Where this is really helpful is, let's say you're on a second grade team of teachers, you can create an activity, you can share it to your school and the district library, and then you can go to other second grade teachers and say, hey, go get that activity I made. So imagine if you were working as a team together, um, Abby, I'm gonna say hey to you here, Abby's got some awesome things that she's recently shared, where Abby could say, hey, all of the 15, Point eight stuff is in there, you can go grab it and use it for your class. Um, that's really um, considerate of her to do that. And also it's a great way for you to work with colleagues, which is really nice. Lastly, you'll be able to see activities that are from your own library, activities that you've created. And if you have something that you've created and you really like, you can share it to the um, school and district library. All you have to do is go into that activity and click the three dots. And um, if you hit the share option, it'll say, hey, where would you like to share it? You could share it out to um, your school and district library. You can share it out to um, the Seesaw community at large. And you can also copy it. So if you want to make like a shared document for your team where you're linking different Seesaw activities, that's another way where you can share that out. These essentially are just templates that you're using. So you're taking one activity um, that's already created. Uh, sometimes they have like media embedded and things like that. And then you're just reusing it um, to make your life a lot easier. Just always make sure it's good quality. The other thing that you can do is you can have students um, use a template for their responses. And I don't want you to get these two things confused. So I'm going to go here into the ad. I'm going to assign an activity and I'm gonna create a new activity. So you might remember before that I um, downloaded a worksheet from Canva. So here I could title my activity, give the students instructions for completing it. And if you scroll down here, there's a place where it says add template for student responses. This will set your worksheet, your image, whatever as the background for students to annotate on top. So I would click here to add template for student responses. It would say, where is this file? So I'd upload the file, although I could pick it from my Google Drive. Um, I'm pretty sure I did save that in my folder. I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna grab it from my Google Drive. It's gonna go into my templates folder. I'm gonna be able to find my templates folder here. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, let's see, this wasn't the best example. Let me go back out to my drive. 
There's my Sky Diary. I can see it because I just touched it this morning. If I select that and bring in that PDF to the activity, and again, in Seesaw, you can bring in PDFs or images or whatever, this sets it as the background for kids. And I could even here, which is one of my favorite things about Seesaw, is I could add voice instructions on the activity. I could add a video, I could add a text box, whatever I wanted. And then by hitting the screen check mark to accept it, now that template is there for students to do. So again, don't get this confused with you adding something for instructions. This is a template for students to complete. In Seesaw, you always remember to save the activity. So now I have that template in there for students. So Seesaw is really template friendly, which is something that's very nice. Um, we do have a resource. We just had a, a presentation this last fall, or I guess it was over um, December and January, where we had some people with uh, some new product features that are in Seesaw, and there's even been more upgrades. So if you want to explore more about some of the new Seesaw features, you can just click that slide right there, and it's going to show you how to use some of these new tools. The last place that I'm going to talk to you about using templates from is from Pear Deck. We have a fantastic subscription, um, the Pear Deck Premium or Pear Deck Pro, and you have access to a whole bunch of stuff from Pear Deck, which is really fantastic. Um, one thing that I like about Pear Deck is that it already works with slide decks that you have created. It's just a way for you to add interactivity to these already established slideshows. If you've never used Pear Deck before, or you've seen it used, or you're just not real sure about it, I want you to click this slide deck. It'll give you uh, the links for everything that you need to download. You need to use um, an extension and a Google add-on for your slides. But this is from a presentation we did this winter. I think once you get started using Pear Deck and try it out a few times, you'll find it is really a neat tool. And it's a, a, a great way for you to get some good formative data for students, but also uh, it makes things more engaging and it's it's pretty cool. Um, you'll see even one of my um, colleagues is using Pear Deck in one of the other presentations today. So the neat thing about Pear Deck is they do have some templates you can search by subject area, but they also have all sorts of free stuff that they send out. Uh, one place I find a lot of this stuff is on their Pear Deck blog, and they'll do things like um, seasonal templates and things like that. Um, if you go out of here, like this is one that I had from their winter fun. I'm anticipating there's probably going to be some spring slides pretty soon. And then really awesome, they have a partnership with New Zela where you can sign up and you can get weekly decks sent directly to your inbox every Monday. So you sign up for these and they automatically mail out every uh, Monday at 630 in the morning. And uh, I'll even show you full disclosure, I save them in a folder in my um, email account. I've just made a, a label in my Gmail and it'll show you the different decks for that week. You don't have to use them in any particular order. They're just five topical decks that usually have four to five slides in them. Um, you'd use them generally as student self-paced, but you could also use them um, the teacher paced mode. And again, these are great things that can work whether your students are in person at home or um, hybrid or concurrent with these two. But there's all sorts of fun things. So this week it's got some serious stuff and it's also got some silly stuff. But all you have to do is sign up for these um, weekly slides and they'll send them directly to you each week. Um, one pro tip about that, you do need to make sure that your students are signed into Newzella. Um, and I'll put a link in the um, video description for this uh, or in the slide deck rather. Um, so with just an instruction sheet, they just are going to sign with Google, but you want to make sure that they sign in there first because the two programs work together, which is pretty cool. Um, lastly, they have these weekly wonders that they send out every once in a while. Um, a lot of this stuff all comes from the Pear Deck blog. So if you've never checked out Pear Deck before, I want you to like dive into the slide deck a little bit and I want you to check out some of the free stuff. Again, they just email it to you each week. You don't have to do anything at all. So just to conclude, a lot of people say, hey, um, you know, if you're telling me I don't want, you don't want me to use tools like Teachers Pay Teachers where there might be copyright issues, where do I find templates? 
Um, out in the world, there are all sorts of um, ed tech folks like me, but other people that are sharing out free resources all of the time. And you just have to kind of figure out who fits your style. Um, there's some great websites that we've promoted before, like Pocketful of Primary or Vicki Davis, who's Cool Cat Teacher. I even follow Monica Burns, um, Catlin Tucker, our speaker this afternoon. There's a ton of people with blogs out there that share resources. Um, I really connect with this guy, J. Matt Miller. Um, he's from Indiana, and um, he has this whole um, blog called Ditch That Textbook, and there's a whole bunch of different series off of that, even as a book that he's written that's called Ditch That Tech. And long story short is he shares out templates all the time, and I, and I find that a lot of his stuff kind of aligns with things I'm interested in. So just by seeking out templates and seeking out ed tech people that I'm interested in, I've found a creator, a maker that is sharing um, high quality work that really fits my style. So now I subscribe and now I get updates from that person when they update their blog. So you may just have to do a little looking for um, somebody that suits your grade level or your content area or things like that. And talk to your neighbors. Um, a lot of people have people that they follow and that they find resources from. We really appreciate your time today, and I hope that you've saved some templates to your Google Drive template folder. Remember, you can always access these slides as well, and you can just put it right in that template folder as well. As well. So when you go back, you'll be like, oh, I know she told me about something, and you'll be able to find the link from there. Um, remember to always save your templates logically, and I always share them in my Google Drive because then it's easy for me to collaborate and share with another teacher or another person, and that's something I do every day. I hope you have a great rest of your e-learning day today. There's lots to learn, and we're looking forward to talking to you so much more about blended learning. Have a great day.